Hello everyone, new stream. We're still in the um implementing the back and for Wildflow series, but today we're drifting a little bit on just are we going to focus on implementing all zero on a Wildflow site? Okay. The reason is because we're gonna use this all zero integration to um create um a user um database and, and manage those users and be able to identify them in our application so then we can use that um to um call the the endpoints identify the users and retrieve the proper data from them yep that's it sweet let's implement all zero on a waffle site so all i have is my waffle site that it's pretty simple we just have a forming here and our goal is to implement a login logout um, system so we can ask users to log in and then once they are logged in we can retrieve their information and also we can allow them to log out okay that's our first step if you are following um, this stream with me if you're trying to implement also Azure with me all you need to have is an account in Azure okay right now I'm in my in our FinSuite account but I'll create a new one and do everything from scratch and also just a waffle project. Okay. So let's start with just all zero. Okay. We'll, we'll create everything from scratch. I've left this in purpose. I haven't done anything beforehand because I know that I'm going to mess up. <laughs> so, um, anytime that I mess up, you can see, we can all work together and see the problems that you probably run into when you're doing it by yourself. So hopefully you can you can um, learn some extra things and not just me telling you the exact steps that you have to follow. Okay, but let's just uh, go in all zero and I'll create a new tenant. Okay, tenant is just like an account that you have in all zero. Um, and this one I will call it uh, Clubler Clubler Workers Stream, for example. Okay, we're gonna base this on the US and I'm gonna set it to development. These tags are essentially uh, just going to define what all zero asks you to implement to make things work. So if we were in production, we would have to be getting um, setting uh, proper keys for uh, cool authentication. We would have to be setting a proper email provider when sending emails, all that stuff. But for now, we don't care. I'm just going to set it to development so all zero can handle everything for us and we just care about implementing it on the site. So let's create this. Let's see what we come up with. Yeah, so um, I'm just going to set, I'm a new all zero user. Let's just walk through what we need. In our case, in, in the Webflow case, we are going to set it to be a single page application, okay? Because uh, this, everything that is published in Webflow, it's, it's a static site. We don't have any backend. We are not doing any any backend work, any we're not processing anything in the requests um, before sending a response to the users. We just serve static HTML that has been generated by Waffle. So we're gonna treat it as a single page application. And we're just gonna set it to raw JavaScript. No Angular, no React, nothing like that. Yep. And because I've said that, all zero is going to suggest me to use the the all zero S SPHIS, which we'll jump in, in a second. Yep. But social connections, I don't care much about this right now, but usually you could select here everything that you want to, to, to implement. And then you would have to go through a few steps to make sure that these providers are set up correctly. In this case, I think that if we just choose Google, um, Azure is going to give us like a mock account initially. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not until you go to production that Azure is going to tell, let's tell us to go and set up our our own personal Google account in in the Google Cloud Pro, um, account, uh, console. So for now, today we don't care about this, but we'll select Google. Social connections, okay. User ID, yes. We can create a sample user. Yeah, let's create it just for now. Let's say test at test dot com. One two three four five six seven eight nine ten. At eight nine. I know that this is the more secure password ever. I don't know if I'm going to be able to use that. Okay. Colors, I don't care about this. Cool. So now, now we, we already have our, our all zero tenant created. So we could potentially be already accessing the login page. Okay. 
R0 acts as an SSO. And if you don't know what an SSO means, is essentially, usually when you have an application, um, you, when you log in, you would just have your own form where you have, you know, the, the email, the password and the login like this, and this is, this would be my, my app, right? But in the, in an SSO, this login screen, it's moved away from the app. So it's no longer my app. Let's call this my app.com. It's no longer my app, but instead the, the login page, it's moved away to a separate page. And this separate page is the one from all zero. Okay. All zero like this. So instead of having the login, the login in my app, we just have a login button. And when clicking that login button, the user is sent to the SSO page. Okay. And then when the user, when the user correctly sends in, then the user is brought back to my app. Okay. And um, the benefit of having an SSO like this is that this means that you could have multiple apps like, whoops, just messing up. Sorry. You could have multiple apps and all the apps just point to the same login screen. And this is essentially what we have in FinSuite. If you are a FinSuite Plus user, which you should be if you're here, <laughs> when you're logging into FinSuite, you always see the same login screen. And this is because Auth0 acts as an SSO. The login screen, it's by Auth0, it's not by FinSuite, and then all applications connect into it. Okay? So the moment that we try to log into, into Auth0, we're going to be brought to this login page, which is not in our site. It's in, it's, it's, it's an externally hosted site. Okay. Let's continue here. And we have here an onboarding guide, but this onboarding guide, it's, it's going to provide us a full application and just, we, you know, some sample code. So instead of following the onboarding app, I'm going to implement the, the, the SDK with you now. So. Oh, it's asking to download it, but I don't care. I'm ready to use this. Cool. So in all zero, we have applications. Okay. Applications is just a way of splitting, um, concerns. So imagine that, you know, the same as in FinSuite that we have multiple sites where you can log in, you can log in in attributes, you can log in in, fin uh, in, in the FinSuite plus dashboard, you can log in in West, you can log in in multiple sites. You can essentially just split split um, the these concerns into multiple applications, so you can have different setup uh, settings for each app. Okay, for today we're just gonna create one single app, but you could create multiple if you wanted to, and we're gonna call this again Cloudflare Workers Stream. Okay, and we're gonna use the single page web application setup. Okay. If you were building a mobile app, then maybe you wanted to use native. If you, if you were building an, a, a, a website where you have backend, um, processes going on, maybe you want to use a regular web application and machine to machine connections. It's when, when you want to communicate directly from, from a server to, to all zero. Okay. But we're going to go with SPA. Okay, great. So we have our application. Let's move into settings. This is the first, the, the thing that we're going to be managing to make sure that this app is accessible by our users. Okay. By default, we have our name. This is just for, for organization. We have a domain that it's generated by all zero. Okay. This, do this domain could be changed if you pay for a, a subscription and you implement a custom domain. So maybe instead of having an all zero domain, I want to have something like um, stream.finsuite.com, whatever. Okay. In that case, in this domain could change. The client ID is the, the ID that identifies our application. Okay. And the client secret, we don't really have to care much about it for now. Okay. And let's move on down here. We have this set up as a single page application, and then we have a bunch of settings here. We have application login URI, allow callback URLs, allow logout URLs, allow web origins. Okay. We'll see this in a second, because now we're going to jump into the Waffle site and start implementing it. But you'll notice that some things fail because we will have to update these settings. But I want to show you why these things fail before, before we start um, implementing them. Okay. 
Um, just a second. I want to make sure that everything is good to go. Advanced settings. I want to see the sign uh, the the cryptographic method that it's being used. RS two fifty six. Okay, that's good. Okay, perfect. Let's move now to the waffle side. Okay, we have our basic application created, but now we have to use it to actually use it. So we have our waffle side, and because we're going to be using a, a an npm package that it's called all zero all zero spajs, which is the the official SDK from all zero that you can use on on a static site to 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 interact with all zero. I'm going to use uh, the developer starter. Okay, so I'm just going to create. I'm I'm gonna create a fresh copy of the developer starter. I know that we we already have one code base for the back end, so we're gonna create a separate code base for the front end, and maybe in a future we could create a mono repo if we wanted to. But I don't want to complicate things. So today I'm just gonna create a separate separate repository for everything that is going on on the front end with all zero. Okay. So let me just use this template to create a new repo, and I'm gonna set it just in my no. Actually, I'm gonna set it to FinSuite. We'll say stream uh, workers. Isn't this the one that I we're already using? Ah, so it's on my personal account, so we'll do the same. And I'll say front end like that. Okay, I'm gonna make it public so you can check it out whenever you want. And should be good to go in one second. Let me create a copy of this. I'm using GitHub Desktop for it. Uh, that's it. Let's open this. And because this is a fresh copy, I will have to install all the dependencies. So we're using pmpm. I'm going to say pmpm install. Like that. Okay. Just a second. So now we have two different VS Code instances open. Okay, one it's for the backend, another one it's it's for the frontend. And um, I'm just letting you know that in in case that you haven't assisted the previous streams, we wrote some frontend um, code to manage this the form submissions to send that to send the data to the to the backend. Okay, so eventually we'll also take this this code that we have here and move it to the new repo that we've created for for the frontend. Okay, but for now, let's just focus on all zero. Let's come here, utils, and everything should be good to go. So I, I'm gonna run pmpm dev. And sorry, because I need to allow my network to be accessed. I don't know why I had this error. So let's do it again. Okay. And now well, let's just take this script that in, I've been suggested and let's add it here on the page. So let's just edit here. Cool. Now we have to wait. And the wait is over. <laughs> Give me a second. Hello, John Doe. Okay, this is good. So this console log that we see here, let me refresh the page. This console log, it's coming now from the developer starter. Okay, so it's coming from this code that we have here. First thing we have to do is implement the all zero SPAJS. Okay. So with these um SDK we'll be able to create a new instance of, of all zero and then we'll be able to communicate to log in the user, to get the user credentials, etc. Okay. So let's just let me get rid of this for now. Or I'll just comment it uh no let's just get rid of it. I'm gonna create an init function. Okay. And this init function will be async. You'll see it now Great, so um, all zero SPA install, let's import it. Let's say um, import from all zero SPA JS. Let me install, pmpm install the one from all zero. So it's gonna be like this. Okay, now we're talking. Okay, now, and in here we have a method that is called create all zero client. 
okay, this is this is what we need to create the auth0 instance. So let's just come here and let's, we'll say uh, client and we'll be, let's disable profile. It's always making spoilers of everything that I want to write. <laughs> Uh, 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 create all zero client like that. Okay, and we'll see that we we are asked a bunch of things here when creating the all zero client. Okay, most of these um options are just optional things that you might or might not need, but we'll just focus on the important things, which is the client ID and the domain. Okay, so let's remember we had these settings in our all zero application in here. So we have in settings, we have the domain and we have the client ID. Okay, these two things can be public. Please never um, expose the client secret on your web site, okay? Because then people could use it to mock uh, calls to your backend API as they, if they were, um, they, they could potentially be modifying access tokens and in injecting malicious data. So please don't do it. But the client ID, this one can be public. So we'll copy both domain and client ID. And so this is client ID, which is this, and the domain, it's this, like that, okay? So let's let's see what happens when we do this. Let me await this, because it's asynchronous. Let's just do this, okay? And we'll console lock the client. Like this, and the last thing that we have to do is call the init function in here. So let's jump on the page like that. Oh, I have to say it PM PM dev. I have to spin up the development server like that. Okay. Um and we when we scan Azure, we'll see that okay, so we have now a client with a bunch of methods that we can use, like get token, log in the user, log out the user, log in with the redirect, etc. Okay. In our case, we're going to check, first of all, um, you know what? Let's do a very simple login button just for the sake of being able to click around stuff. So let's just come here and I'll put it maybe up here. I don't care. Let's say login. And let's identify this button with something like data element equals to login for now. Okay. Like that. So all we have to do now is let's create an additional function and it's going to be in a UI, for example, in here. And in here, we will have to wait until Webflow has been ready. So instead, let's just do it here. Let's say window.webflow. It's equals to an array, window.webflow, not web assembly, but webflow. Push like that, and we'll pass the, the callback. Okay, so essentially when I'm wrapping this, we'll, I'm, I'm making sure that the entire page has been loaded, so the login button will be there. So let's try to get this login element, and we'll say document, Document dot query selector. Data element equals to login. Okay. And if there is no login element, let's just return like that. So what we want to do when clicking on the login element is trigger a login workflow. Okay. And essentially what we'll do is uh Azure will send the user to the login page. So let's do this and we'll add an event listener. And we'll say that when we click this button. We want the client, which is what we created here before, the client to log in with a redirect like that. And I think it, this is async. Is it sync? So we'll await for this. Actually, we don't need it. I'll keep it just, just in case, but you really wouldn't need that actually because we're being redirected. Now that I have everything, let's see if it works or not. Spoiler alert, it's not gonna work <laughs> because there are a couple of settings that we have to, to define, okay? But this is exactly what I wanted to show you. So when we click on login, 
Now we're being sent to a login page. First step, check, okay? But this login page, obviously it's not working correctly. Something, something it's missing here. So we have to set up, finalize the setup in our application to make sure that all zero allows us to be logging in, to be logging in from this site. Okay. So let's just scroll down in our application details. And now it's the time where we have to fill everything in here. Okay. This one, it's, it's just optional. This is, um, in case that, um, you had a specific login page and when something goes wrong, you want this, you want also to suggest users to send them to that, um, to that, um, specific page. We don't care about this for now. We do care about allow callback URLs. Let's remember this workflow in here. Let's remember what was happening here. When we had a page and the user clicked the login button, okay, the, the user then it's sent to the login page from all zero. And from the login page, all zero returns the user back to that site with a token. Okay, that token is included in the URL. And that token can be used to exchange it for a real JWT, um, an access token which contains all the information from the user. Um, it basically grants you access to everything that the user has. So in order to protect other websites to, you know, try to, to get this token by sending, uh, by sending the, the users to all zero, you have to define what sites are allowed to be interacting with all zero. Okay. So then nobody can create a site and send them to your login page and then suddenly accessing your user's um, login um, authorization. So we have to define our page as an allow callback URL. In, I, in my case, it's just this one. Okay, but if instead of being on the home page, you had another page uh, where you were doing the, the token exchange, you would have to define that site in here. So imagine that I had something like, I don't know, callback, whatever. Okay, but homepage for now, it's fine. And allow lookup, but, um, it's the same. So we have to define from where we're gonna be allowing users um, to return after logging out. Because when you log out, the flow is the exact same thing. When you log out, imagine that this is a logout. Oh, wow. Um, it's the same thing. The user first, it's brought to the all zero page all zero locks him out and then the user is sent back to your site. So you also have to tell all zero, Hey, that URL where you're sending the user after logging out, I'm allowing you to send the user there. Okay. So we'll just use the same one for now because we just have one page <laughs> and allow web origins is essentially, I think it was, uh, da, 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 da. um, to make sure that there are no cores issues, I believe. Let's just set again the the same site. Okay, we're gonna be allowing it. That's it. And for now, that's it. I think. Let me see if we're missing something. But I think no. So let's save the changes. Okay, great. So now we have another step checked, but I think that we will still have one more issue. So let's try it out. Let's go ahead, let's click on login, and we're going to be brought to the login page. Okay, no issues. Okay, good. And let's try to remember the password that we created. And it was test at test. <laughs> okay, okay. This is what was um, about to happen here. So we've been able to log in successfully, but what's missing is how all zero then it's validating that our site it's um it's connecting to it and what's missing it's the audience okay and this is not specified here honestly this is something that confused me the hell a lot when i was uh, first implementing all zero for the first time but essentially now we have to move to a second part which is apis in here okay um so this section in here is, uh, allows allows you to create um, to differentiate multiple APIs that could be using consuming your um, your all zero applications. Okay, um, 
usually you don't care about it. You, you can just create an API, but never use it. But maybe you have multiple APIs where you want to be, um, you know, having different roles and permissions for different users, and then you have to care about it. And Azure asks us to create this. So let's create a new API for now. I'll just call it stream, whatever. And an identifier can be anything. Um, I'm just going to call it. I'm just going to use the same, the same domain from Azure, just to avoid confusions. So I'll just do this, okay? And I'll create it here. Stream, and I'll use this identifier. I think it, it asks, do you have HTTPS? Let me see, like that. And the singing algorithm is going to be RS. Oh, you know what? Actually, maybe we don't even need this API. What's missing, it's this. So in, in the SDK, there is a, an authorization params section where we can pass a redirect URI, okay? And this redirect URI, it's where we want the user to be sent after successful login which is what we already whitelisted in the allowed callbacks URL section. So let's first do this and see if it's fixed before doing anything else. So I'll just come here um, and we'll add this with our red URI. So user goes to the login page, successfully logins, and then it's redirected back to our, to our site. Okay, um, the domain, um, let's see if this solved the issue. And if not, then we, this means that we need the API. Okay, it, it actually worked. So what happened, see that um, I was redirected to somewhere, but it was super fast. And now the, the, the page has been loaded with an additional query param here, which is this code um, page, okay? But I wanna show you again um, the entire flow. So I'm gonna log out. And to be able to log out, I have to define a new button that's going to be log out, like that. And we're going to call this log out. And let me publish it. And we go back to the code. And the same that we did for the login element, we're going to do it for the log out. And if there's no log out element, we'll return. And when clicking on the log out element, we'll also do the same. We'll trigger a method from from R0 that it's specific to logging out the user. And it's client.logout, like this. And I don't know if it's a promise, it is, so let's await it. Although it's not necessary in this context, but it's a good practice. Okay, let me log out now. Good, so logging out, it's working fine. Let's now log in again. So when I click on login, I'm brought to the page. Okay, this page, I'm just going to log in with my credentials, test at test, and I'm going to set the password to the one that I shared, which is this one. Um, and then I'm being brought back to the Waffle site with a code parameter up in here. Okay, let us let me just show you this code. This code, it's not a, an access token. This code, it's a token that we can then exchange for an access token with all zero. So there's one extra step that we have to do before we can get the user data and we can get the, the access token from the user, okay? And this is also a method that it's, um, that it's included in the SDK. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to check if there is any code on the query params in here, okay? And when there is a code on when logging the page, we're gonna take this code and exchange it. So let me come here and we'll say, um, let's create a URL. It's gonna be new URL with whip window.location.href. Actually, we don't need URL, we just need the URL search params. So it's gonna be new URL with the search in here, okay? And we're gonna say, check if there's the code. So URL get the code like this. and. If I console log this, you'll see how automatically it grabs it from the, the query params and we can use it. So if we inspect the console, 
you can see how the code is being wrapped already. And by the way, for, um, don't mind these errors. These errors are coming from the, um, the code that I have in here. So let me actually disable all of this because it's conflicting like that. So all we have to do now is take this code and exchange it for a, for a valid access token. Um, if, if there is some code, we're going to say client dot exchange. I think it's, uh, handle redirect callback this one. And what this is asking, I think, oh, actually it doesn't ask anything. It just, it just does, does it for us. So we just have to check if, if there's any code in the query params, but then Azure handles the rest for us. So it's going to handle the redirect callback. We're going to wait for it. Um, and after that, I believe that we're good to go. So let's try it out. Let's go here. Let's refresh. There was some code in valid state. Okay. There was some in valid state. So let's do it again. Let me just come here. We'll log in. And now it seemed to work. Okay, but obviously we're not seeing anything because I'm not constantly locked anything. Let's do, um, let's just console lock the client. Cause I want to, I want to show you what we can do with the client after that. So I'll just do this. Yeah. Okay. The problem is being, um, because we're not removing this cool uh, query param from the page. So the next time that we load the page, we're not checking again for the quote query param. And to do that, we will just have to do uh, history replace state. Um, essentially it takes the same, the current, the current URL that we have and it, uh, it changes it, but without um, reloading the page. And in this case, we don't have to pass any metadata. We ha want to use the same title. So we'll say document title. And we're going to do window.origin plus window.path name. No, no. Location. Location.path name. And let me do the same here. Location.origin. Essentially, what we're doing is we're taking the current location and we're replacing it for the same location, but just with the origin, which would be the domain. And the path name, which in this case is just the root, it's just the, the forward slash. And that's it. We're getting rid of all the query params in this case. So if we do that again, let me get rid of this. Now we'll see how we log in. We get the code, but after getting the code, we are removing it from the URL. Because then anytime that we refresh the page, um, we're not checking again for the code and we're not trying to exchange it because then the state it's not correct. It's it's already used. Um, so now we have the client that it's successfully logged in because we've we've done the, the full process. Okay. So one thing that we can do now with the client is get the user. Like that. And when I do this, whoops, let me await it. When I do this, now we have information from our user. Email, name, nickname, picture and the user ID, okay? This user ID, the sub, is the user ID that all zero assigned to us when we created this test account. Um, and this, this user ID is what we're gonna also check for when we move um, all this logic into the backend to identify the users, okay? So last thing that it's missing, it's getting an access token. So um, let me say, because we just want to get the access token if the user is logged in. So there are two things that we can do. The first one is we can check if the user is logged in or not. So for now, I'll say is logged in. We can do await.client.is. I think it was, oh no, it's authenticated. It's authenticated like that. And all zero, it's going to tell us if the user has been logged in or not. So let's also console log that like this. And if it's logged in, 
I want to show you the access token. So let's get the access token. And we'll say await client dot um, get access token silently, uh, get token silently. This is the method. This, what does is it tries to retrieve the, the access token from the user in the background. So any process that it has to do, if it has to refresh the token, ever, anything, um, all zero trust to do it in the background. And we'll console like that too. Turn it on. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. We are logged in. All zero knows that we are logged in. And we have an access token here. This is the real access token. And this is what will allow us to, um, to identify ourselves whenever we communicate to the backend. Okay? And what I want to show you now is I'm going to move to jwt.io, which is a website that uh, you can use to decode access tokens and see the contents of them. And I'm going to take this and put it in here. Um, so after all, I think that we will have to create the API that I mentioned. Um, so let's do it super quick and then I'll explain what's happening. Or actually, let me, let me, let me, let me just make a quick recap and then I'll explain what ha what's happening. Okay. Um, so what we've done so far is, um, we've implemented the, the, the workflow where we create an all zero instance using the application details that we have to find when creating the application inside Algero. Okay, in this case, it's this one called Cloudflare Workers. And then with this client, we are able to trigger the logging workflow. So we send the user to the login page, the user signs in, and then the user is sent back to our site. And when doing this, the, this flow, um, when the user is sent back to our site, it includes a query param with a token, with a code. Okay. And that code can be used to exchange it for an access token. This is what's called the implicit flow. So it was to implicit flow. In case that you want to, to read more about it, okay, you can, you can look it up. But essentially, it will show you the, the same thing that I explained, but with better graphics. <laughs> okay. Um, so th with this access token, we should be able to, to, um, to get the user data, which we already are able to, because if we're logged in, I can do stuff like, um, if we're logged in, let me get the user, um, client dot get user like this, and this is a sync. So we have to wait for it. And we can log it and we'll see how we get the, the data from the user. So see how we already have the information from the user who's logged in. Okay. But what's missing is that the access token doesn't have an audience right now. This is one of the, the, um, the, the fields that it's included in the, in the payload of the access tokens, but we have not defined it because we have not defined an API in, in all zero. Okay. And as I mentioned before, APIs in all zero are a way of, of, uh, breaking down your services in different, in different APIs. So maybe you can have different permissions in, in each one of them, but we'll just create one single API and it's going to be stream again, and we'll use something random. We'll use something like, I don't know, what could it be, um, stream.finsuite.com. Okay. Whatever. This actually, this can be anything. It's just an identifier. Usually they, they use a, a URL, but I think that you can write anything. So we'll keep this create. Okay. And now that we have this identifier, we have to use it as the audience. So if we go back to the client here, we're going to also pass an audience. And this audience will be this identifier that we just created. Okay. And hopefully now let me log out. It's locked in false. Now it's not log in again. Hopefully now the access token will contain the proper payload. Uh, what was the password? This one. Okay. Okay. Let's try it again. 
we we are the user. We also got an access token. And let's go to JWTIO. And now it's working. Okay. Phew. And I'm just going to say that this access token should be private. <laughs> so I'm sharing it here because we're developing, but never share your access tokens with anyone. Okay? Because th with this access token, you're essentially um, giving your identity to somebody. With this access token, somebody who has it could be calling the API on your behalf. So if you were, if you had an access token from a, I don't know, from a bank or from wherever, they could be calling the APIs and make a transfer of money to themselves. So, so access tokens, uh, this is something that has to always be very secure. Never share it with anyone and never expose it publicly anywhere. So this is one of the things that we can tackle maybe in a feature too. But let's inspect what's going on here. We have the encoded access token and we have the decoded access token, which has three parts. And this is why we have three different colors here that are uh, separated by dots in here. The first part is the header. The second part is the payload. And the third part is the signature in here. The header just contains information about the um, the algorithm that it's used and the the type of of token that it is. In this case, it's a JWT, but it could be a different uh, kind of token. The payload contains information about the user itself and the system that generated that token. So it would be the issuer, which is our all zero instance. It also has information about us, like the, the user ID. It also has the audience. And this is what you can check in case that you had multiple multiple APIs. Let's remember that in here, you can create different, different APIs with different permissions. In our case, we just have one. And we call this um, stream.finsu.com. This is the identifier for, um, this is our audience. Um, so it's the token already, it's mentioning that this audience and it's the one that the token was generated for. And also, it, it also includes the, the all zero audience because we want to use, um, we, we want to have access to user and all zero includes it. And then it just have some extra information. And this is, I think that when it was generated and this is when it's gonna expire. And I think that it, there's one day of difference. Yeah. So essentially, this this access token has one 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 day of life. Um, I don't know what it is. Is the party to which this token was issued? Okay, and then the scope, and this is just telling us the scope that we were granted with this. This code could be changed in the API too. So if we come here to API, we could code to permissions, and imagine that. We want to have different permissions, like maybe on this API, we just allow users to, I don't know, to read. We don't, we don't allow them to write anything. You could be adding permissions here and then check those permissions in your, in your backend to make sure that people have the proper permissions. Okay. Essentially with this access token, it's what we're going to need to, to verify that our users are who they are, right? And this is what we're going to send to our backend anytime that we send the information, okay? Let's remember that um, when we submit a to-do, we have to send that data to the backend. But now, instead of hard coding the user ID, instead, we're going to send the access token to the backend, and the backend will check um, We'll check if, if the token is valid and who is the token from. So we, um, the backend will be able to decode the token to validate that the token is valid and then extract the user ID from it. And our stream today, I thought that I would have enough time to talk about both parts. So both implementing Augur on the Waffle side and then moving to the backend and interacting with those tokens. But there's so much to talk about. So today we're playing, we're, we're breaking this into different parts. Today we're just keeping, we're ending at um, with just Webflow implementation. On the next stream, we're gonna talk about um, getting these access tokens and interacting with them, making sure that we can.
decode them, we can validate them, we can extract the user information from them, and then return um, what the user is asking for um, for uh, in the in the API request. Okay. So if you want to see um, me implementing this and going deeper, and you have any questions, anything, we'll see you in the next on the next week. Um, I appreciate you being here. If you li like this content, leave a like, leave a comment, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you all.